Good morning, everyone. I am just going to plug in the computer. I can plug it directly into the modem, and I am going to do that. I usually do that before I go live, but this morning, I'm not quite ready. Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and today is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of a Stampin' Up! catalog and we give it a little makeover. Now, you can copy the card exactly um, because the cards are great, but if you don't have the stamps or if you want to be a little different, then you can take the card and use it as a blueprint to create a new card. And so, Today's card is a slimline card. Have you ever made a slimline card before? I've made a few and I really like it because it's like a non-traditional shape of a card. So let's have a look at today's card. Here it is. So um, it's got a lot of length to it and it's a little skinnier than a normal card. And it's on page 64 of our January to June mini catalog. If you have one, you can follow along. And um, what we did for the sketch is when we take the sketch, we always kind of bring it down to a traditional size card, but it's very easy to turn it into a slimline card. So here are the measurements that you could use if you were going for a traditional four and a quarter by five and a half card front. But I'm going to do the slimline card today and you can find these sketches over on my blog. The link is down below. You can also find them on our Casing Tuesday Facebook group. And if you want to go to the Facebook group, you can join us and each week we post our cards, uh, all the same cards that we've done under um, the card of the day. and. Generally, people post throughout the week because not everyone can do it on Tuesday, but it's really neat to see how that original card turns into so many different types of cards. Good morning, everyone who's joined me. I will talk to you all afterwards. So um, I've got a lot of die cutting to do today because guess what? Um, we have a new special that just started today because today is March 1st. It's called Savings in Bloom. And what the special is, is um, this stamp and uh, cut and emboss mini is normally $60. And it's got like a narrower um, width to it. But normally it's $60 in the U.S. And um, for the month month of March 2022 it's only $48 so that's a really good deal it's a nice entry-level machine and I've had my little troubles with this machine but guess what I have found um, a new way of running things through that is working really well for me and I want to share that with you today and um, we also have a whole bunch of die bundles for sale. And today I'm using the Pansy Patch Bundle and it is also 20% off. So um, if you pl uh, click on over to my blog, that blog banner, the very top one, will have um, a link um, to the special that's going on right now with all the die bundles that, that are included in the special. My suggestion to you is to go through it um, and choose the ones that you want to pick up because um, right now with the supply chain and everything if one of those bundles sells out it's out of the special so it probably it won't be we probably won't have time to replace it before um, the end of March. So what will that mean is that you won't be able to get it at the 20% off. So if you love the pansies today, um, get them sooner rather than later because they could go out of stock, even though they might still be available later, but they won't be available at the 20% off price. Okay. I am going to switch over to my camera so we can get started and make today's card and I can show you my card. All right, so here's the Pansy Patch Bundle and let me show you my card first. It is full of pansies. Um, and when I made the Slimline card, you know, I you can make slimline cards in different proportions and since we don't really have a standard slimline card I just kind of made this card and I was like really happy with it um, 
And I wanted to share with you that these fit into slimline envelopes that we now have. Um, I made my card a little bit too wide. So today during my demonstration, I'm going to make this card just a little narrower so it will fit into the slimline envelope. Um, this card that I made today will still fit into kind of your traditional bill type envelope. I think it's called an A7 um, envelope. Maybe not. I think I've got that wrong, sorry. Scratch that, I was buying envelopes for something else the other day and they were A7. That's not what you need. Um, but those traditional um, kind of long skinny envelopes that you get bills in, that's the kind of envelope you need for this card. But we also have these great slimline envelopes and they are really pretty. They've got this little uh, detailed edge and they are lined. Um, so I'm gonna make a card today that fits into these envelopes and I'll show you all of them once I'm done my card. Okay, so that's the card. And then this is the Pansy Patch Bundle, and guess what, it fits through the stamping, the mini stamping cut and emboss machine, so that's why they're all kind of on special together. I'm also using the layering circles dies, and I think they might all fit through as well. I would have to test the largest one, but certainly um, most of them will fit through this one. We'll, we'll test the bigger one out, um, although we don't need it today. Okay, um, let's get started. And we're gonna do a lot of stamping to start. We need to make a bunch of pansies. And I'm gonna start off, we need to make pansies. You can, there's different pieces to make the pansies. Um, and you could die cut them all, but I'm gonna stamp them today. And we'll start off, we'll make that top pansy first. We're gonna need polished pink pale papaya and highland heather. So let's start off with a polished pink one. And we're gonna stamp it. And then off on the side here, I have my stamping chamois. It's like really, I'll show you, it's like really full of gunk, but it cleans so well. Like it, it's so wonderful when you use a stamping chamois. Um, all the ink comes off it might be a little bit stained but the ink is no longer there so you don't muddy your ink pads um and i think i use pale papaya on this one let's use pale papaya and then finally let me clean this off and then we're going to use highland heather on this last one I'm just tap tapping. Sorry, I'm off camera, aren't I? Let me move a little bit over here. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, and that was Holland Heather. And then move these off to the side. And then we're gonna use Blackberry Bliss and Bumblebee for the center. By the way, Bumblebee, if you love Bumblebee, it is going to be retiring very soon. So don't miss out on that. If you like that color, make sure you get your ink refill and some extra cardstock if you like that color. So I'm gonna use this stamp right here, okay? And I'm just gonna center it in the white. There's a lot of different ways to make pansies. So what I suggest is look them up online, Google them, or where's my paper? I'm using the Pansy paper today. Let me see what it's called, actually. It's called Pansy Petals Paper. So when I was looking at how to make a pansy, I actually just looked at the paper, and I looked at this one specifically, and so I kind of mimicked how it was doing. I didn't do this outer edge right here, but I think it looks pretty good. And then the last thing you just need is a little dot of the bumblebee in the center. We've got this tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny kind of rounded triangle stamp for that. So I'm just gonna center that right in there. And that's all there is to the pansies. And now we have a die to cut that out. Let's stamp some leaves. 
And I found it easiest with the leaves to stamp the outline first. So we've got these two stamps here that create the leaves. So let's stamp a bunch of these leaves. I hope I left enough room for the leaves. Okay, so the outline I did first, the darker, not the outline, the detail I did first because it's stamped in darker and it's easier for me to hover the lighter color of the soft succulent over top. And I try and line it up with first the top and then the side. I find it's far easier to do it that way than the other way around. So it just, sometimes with the two step stamps, there's just a, an easy way to do it. Oh, am I gonna have enough room? I think this one's gonna get cut off. I stamped that one a little low. Hmm, I might need to do an extra leaf. Let's, let's grab an extra piece of scrap paper and let's do one more over here. I got a little close to the edge and it might look a little cut off. So let's just do one extra just in case because we need four leaves for my design and three pansy heads. Okay, let's give this Stamping Cut and Boss Mini a whirl. Okay, so it comes like this. It's nice and cute and sweet. And then you open it up like that. And here is the trick. It comes with all of these um, pieces. And this is the piece that you're supposed to use as your platform, the number one. Well, I had a hard time with that. And so yesterday, as I was, you know, looking around, someone said, use the light gray one, which is the number three plate. And if you hold these two up together, I don't know, it's probably imperceptible, but the white is a little bit bigger than the gray one, a little wider. So I'm gonna put that down and let's give this a whirl. Let's see if this will work as nicely as it did last night. And um, you need the two, let's get the flatter one on the bottom. You need the two cutting plates and we need this. And where did I put my dies? Over here. So we'll need these two dies. So we'll start off with this one and get yourself some uh, piece of post-it note or some of this labeling and cover up tape. It acts like this is like all like kind of the post-it note adhesive all along there. Got a piece right here and I tend to just reuse, reuse, reuse. And I'm just gonna kind of center it on here. So the person who taught me this trick last night told me that now that she has found this trick, she really loves her Stampin' Cut and Emboss Mini, and she uses it more. I'm gonna go in, and then I'm gonna go back, and the reason why I'm gonna do that is there's less distance to go if I go reverse out than it does if I have to go all the way back. So let's have a look. Let's see if it cut through. Look at that. Isn't that nice? All right, so number one did a pretty good job. I'm doing a lot of die cutting today. I What I really wanted to do was do some of this die cutting off camera ahead of time so you wouldn't have to watch me cut so many flowers, but guess what? We're gonna go through and then back. See, it's pretty easy with the with just switching out the plate that you use, like the non, it's not even recommended the sandwich, but this is the one that seems to work. And the nice thing, well, not all of these are going to go, not all of your fatter, bigger dies will go through this machine, but this one might be a nice one just to have near your work space for your smaller die cuts. So. We'll see, I'm gonna play more with this machine as the month goes on. You know what? I've got a lot of card stock here. I'm just gonna tear off this piece right here because I don't want it to accidentally get uh, caught in my machine. Okay, now I'm gonna go all the way through. All right, look at, so pretty, huh? Okay. 
So let's tear off this piece because we don't need this. And let's slide this back. I like to work in this direction. Okay. And now we don't need this one anymore. And we need this one. So at least, at the very least, you can see how this works. And um, I know this is kind of boring watching me run through this die, but um, maybe this will just show you how the stamping cut and emboss mini works. I'm going to go through and back. Sometimes I like to do that more than I like to go all the way through. And there's leaf number one. I'm going to just make sure that I don't cut that one leaf um, that I kind of got too close to the edge. through just two more guys this is the time when I wish um, it wasn't alive and I could fast forward it to you but I did not enjoy editing videos it was my least favorite job in the world because when you edit videos you see all your little mistakes, like every time you say um, or you say something twice, or you say something wrong, and pretty soon you're trying to get rid of every single thing that you did incorrectly, and it takes forever. So that's why I pretty much only do lives now, because just the length of time it takes, and then also, then I wouldn't have as much time to design, and bring cute little projects to you. So the good thing about once this becomes a regular video, uh, you can fast forward it through the parts that are boring. Okay. But look at how nice the stamp and cut and emboss mini or the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine did for us today. It did a great job. And we still have one more um, thing to die cut afterwards. We're going to do the layering circle die. So let me just stick this aside for a moment and we'll come back to it in a second once we've got our embossing done. All right, let's talk about our card base. And this one I made a little bit smaller than my original one. So this one measures seven and a quarter by eight and a half. And then I scored the seven and a quarter inch side in half at the three and five eighths inch mark. Okay, so my card front is three and five eighths by eight and a half inches. So I've got, I might need to cut these pieces a little smaller because I made it even smaller than before. So I've cut some pieces of cardstock, designer series paper, from that pansy patch. Pansy Paddles paper. Let's see if we want to make these um, a little shorter because as I was cutting them, let's have a look how they look with the, with the pansies on them. I've got this one, this one, and this one. Right now this is three and a quarter. We could maybe go a little skinnier on the side. What do you think? Shall I cut it like to three inches instead of three and a quarter inches? Because I'm just adjusting my measurements to make it a little skinnier. Or do you like the, the width of the paper right here? What do you think? I'm going to let you guys meditate on that. Right now it's at three and a quarter. I could make these pieces of paper a little shorter. And while... We're doing that, deciding that. Let's do our little greeting. And I've got a piece of evening evergreen right here. And I've got my greeting. And I've got embossing powder and Versamark. And we're going to stamp this right here. And just about right there. And close this up. 
and bring in some white embossing powder. I like to dump them in a little container and then just sprinkle the embossing powder over top. And put that back in, give it a little flick. Put that away. You don't want to melt your embossing powder that's in the container. And then I'll bring in my heat tool. Okay. I'm just melting the embossing powder and you can see with the white it really starts to change color to kind of a brighter white as it melts. Okay, so isn't that pretty? The nice um, white writing on the evening evergreen. And then let's bring back in our little mini machine right here. And so again, I'm using the gray plate, the number three plate instead of the one plate on the mini. And let's have a look at the circles dies and see if they would make it through. So that one is the largest smooth circle. That one looks like it would make it through. Yeah, I think all of them all the layering circles would make it through. The layering circles are not on the special, but I just wanted to see if we were gonna cut with them, if they could all make it through the machine. And it looks like they can. For this one though, I'm gonna need to cut it a little smaller because that's too much width for it to go through. All right, so there's a good size. And I think I used the third largest. Uh, maybe it was the fourth largest. Yes, it was the fourth largest layering circle. And I'm gonna need another piece of this stuff because I lost my other piece. <laughs> All right, I'll retrieve that later. So I'm just gonna make sure that this looks centered and then I'm gonna put a piece of tape right there and then we'll put our second cutting plate on top. And I'll run this through. You know, this is pretty good. We'll see, we're gonna um, be playing with this machine all month and see how it works and see if I love it um, after, after the month is through. But so far so good that, I mean, it's made me so happy. I had a lot of trouble at first with that, um, with that dye sandwich and it was not working. Okay, so we've got our little um, greeting right here and I'm gonna just quickly, um, check. I think you guys said th let's keep the paper width at three and a quarter. Okay, so let's let's do this. I'm gonna kind of arrange this here. I think the best thing to do with the arranging of these is you want to adhere the top and the bottom first, and then the two in the middle. I left my glue all the way across the room, of course. So let's go ahead and grab the first piece. So this is the Pansy Petals paper and one side has pansies or leaves on it. I could have cut out these leaves as well, but I wanted to show you how fun it was to just stamp them very easily because paper will run out eventually, right? Unless you buy a lot of it, but you can stamp indefinitely with your stamps with um, just really easily. Okay, so this, I'm gonna try and eyeball it the same distance from the top and bottom. And I think I'm doing it about half an inch from the top and bottom. And just so you know, now that we've 
decided on which paper we're using. This measures three and a quarter inches by one and a half inches. And then we'll just kind of center both of those. Let's see. That looks good. I'm making my slimline card even skinnier than before because <laughs> it didn't fit in the envelope. It it ate too much of the chocolate from that I used for Friday and it didn't fit into the envelope anymore. Look at this paper. It's got fresh freesia text. That would be nice as well too. It's, it's hard to pick a pattern with this paper because it's so beautiful. Each side is like really nice. Okay. All right, so let's kind of just lay these out. I'm gonna take two leaves for the top here and you could stamp more leaves for each layer if you wanted to but I try not to be too exacting or too um, the same each time when I'm um, doing these because I want it to look like it's not quite um, too too contrived so I want to not make them look identical and equal. And then we're going to put that one there. All right. So we can do this the easy way if I can find my dimensionals, which they, they are just gone off my desk. Let me see if I can grab the batch of dimensionals. For some reason, my dimensionals always go missing. Like they're <laughs> forever this size, the regular dimensional size, they always go missing on my desk. I'm always, always searching for them. I'm just gonna use one right in the center and I'm going to put this down first. I just found it easier to do that first. So I'm just gonna position that. And I'll come in and grab the next one. Make sure I have enough room. Okay, right there. And then this one, right there. Okay. And then, well, this one I can stick down to. So all the big focal points are on dimensionals. Just make sure that's straight. Okay, so now that the leaves are all sliding around under my pansies, now I'm gonna actually take these and glue these down. Since the pansies are already in place, it's gonna be easy to tuck them in. There's just one dimensional under here, so it can tuck in really easily. Oh, come on. All right. I'm gonna come through here and I'm going to put this up here. And then this one. Right here. And this one right here okay and then I just want to add you know what I did not tie a bow let's grab my little bow tire majiggy thingy and tie a bow I usually do this in advance but today I was not prepared okay Right, and then we'll just take some tear and tape and put it on the back. Decide what is the back of your bow. I think this is nicer. So we'll use this side as the back side. And I like to put tear and tape on the loops of my bow. 
And I like to do this because I feel like the Terran tape, two pieces of Terran tape holds down my bow better. And I know I'm repetitive sometimes in saying all of these tips, but sometimes I have a completely new person on here and they haven't heard the tip before. Or um, I sometimes need to hear a tip like three times before it actually resonates with me. So, okay. So let me just arrange this right here. And we're gonna put this right about here. It's gonna go down here and this is gonna go down here. So we just got that little bow right there. And then finally, we're gonna take what are my favorite embellishment right now. They are these iridescent ice uh, basic jewels and I've almost finished the full sheet of these. I've got another pack ready and um, I'm going to, um, I am going to use the next pack next. See, I'm almost all the way out and then um, we've just got some tiny, teeny ones. Come here. And I'm gonna put one more down here. And that is all there is to this card. I'm gonna actually decorate the inside while we're at it. Um, so let me just show you the difference between the two cards. This one on the left right here was my original card. It's a little uh, wider. And then this one is going to fit into the slimline envelopes. And look, it's a soft succulent card base and I can put it inside um, the soft succulent envelope. Isn't that pretty? And I just wanna share with you these are the slimline envelopes and they come in two other colors. So it's a multi-pack. Let's see, there's 15 in a pack. So you get five of each color. <laughs> they are shrinked wrapped in there or what? Okay, let me pull out this one here and then this one here. Okay. So we've got this one, I believe is in gray granite. I'll have to look that up, a gray granite. And it's got this, and then this one has got kind of a black. So they're all very neutral, so it really doesn't matter what color your card base is, but if you wanted to, you could do like soft succulent with a soft succulent if you wanted to. So how would I finish the inside of the card? This is like a very big space to um, decorate up. Um, so I just wanna share with you some tips to help break up that big length. Um, so I just want to tell you how wide this is. This is three and one eighths inches wide by eight. Okay, and so it's gonna fit in here and there's gonna be the same um, width all the way around like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to break up some of the length by adding a piece of paper to the top of the bottom. So this is gonna be three and one eighths by an inch. So this is going to help break up and make that a little smaller. And then I like this stamp set because this is nice big greetings. That's gonna take away another bit of the length. So I need birthday cards. I've just found out that I have a whole bunch of birthdays to send out for this month. So we're going to do happy birthday. I'm gonna kind of arrange this how I want this. Come okay, here. I think that I think that makes me happy and I think I'll take this block right here and just pick that up and now I have to decide on a color I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do pink What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna let you guys choose. Happy birthday. I've got polished pink, 
Highland Heather or Pale Papaya? So either kind of the orange, the purple, or the pink. What do you think? What color should I stamp it in? I'll let you guys decide. Polished pink, Highland Heather, or Pale Papaya? I don't know. I'm, I'm waffling on it. I think this is what pink would kind of look like um, because it's kind of stained pink. <laughs> but uh, okay, I've got one polished pink. Let's see if we can get some other. I mean, you can see kind of what the pink would look like. Or we could do um, Highland Heather. Or we could do Pale Papaya. All right, I've got two pinks, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do pink. The pinks have it. All right, so let me ink this up. You guys are helping me with my card today. I'm hoping this is nice and inky. All right. Let's see, I'm going to stamp it kind of in the middle. I'm standing up while I stamp this because I've turned this into a really large stamp with a happy birthday. <gasps> Look at that. That looks nice, doesn't it? I think that looks pretty good. Okay, you guys made a good choice. I was waffling. Okay, then notice how I didn't adhere my uh, pieces of paper until after I stamped because guess what, sometimes I make a mistake. And if I make a mistake, then I can either use the back side of the paper or cut myself a new one. And because the paper, the designer paper is finite, you know, um, I've got lots of basic colored cardstock, but the designer series paper is a bit more special. So sometimes I kind of wait before I put it down. And look at that. This is a very simple way to add something to a card. But for your slimline cards, I really like the greetings and the biggest wish stamp set. I'm going to flash that on the screen one more time. Look at that. So that looks pretty good on the inside, right? There's still lots of room to write. And of course you could add another panel to this side, but this gives you just enough room to write a birthday greeting. And look at that, very nice. And then it all fits in to a nice little envelope. Let's have a look one more time. This is the biggest wish stamp set and it's got a lot of great greetings, lots of large greetings you could do if you even wanted to take up more space you could do happy birthday friend you could do hello friend you could do uh, uh thanks <laughs> so you know you've got a lot of different these are have some really great basic greetings i love this stamp set all right what did you guys think of my card today i hope you liked it let me come back over to me. So Pansy Patch Bundle, you can get it 20% off right now. That's awesome. The Stamp and Cut and Emboss Mini, also 20% off right now. Um, have a look at the different uh, bundles that are available. And if you want them for 20% off, think about ordering them earlier in the month rather than later um, because I don't want you to be disappointed and then not be able to get it for the sale price. Um, a lot of this has to do with the supply chain right now. It just takes so long to get things back that Stampin' Up! can't do all the kind of things and bringing things back and having back orders like we used to be able to do that we can no longer do just because we don't know how long things are going to take to um, come back in. Um, so I do have a new host code for the month. Let me put that up on the screen. Where are you? Okay, there is my new uh, March host code. And uh, if you use this host code, then you can qualify um, for my gift of the month. And guess what? This one's a good one. I do this one every year. Um, it is my retired paper. 
And the reason this one's a really good one is um, you get a pack of my retired paper. Now, not like this is like my leftover paper. So it's not going to be a full pack, but it's going to be cut down to six by six, whatever's left of the pack. Um, and there's going to be a minimum of 26 by six sheets in the pack. Um, but it's for every 50 you spend. So if you spend $100 during the month, you're going to get two packs. If you spend 200, you're going to get four packs. And all of that will be tabulated at the end of the month. And I will send these out in April. And they're all different packs of um, paper that I have. Um, I haven't brought um, my the box into my room yet. I have some um, that I've been cutting up. As paper retires, I cut it up into six by six packs um, and then I put it away. Um, so I'll bring that box up into my room and I'll show you um, some of the patterns I have. Now you won't be able to choose your pattern because that would get kind of crazy, um, but it's just fun to get some new paper um, to work with um, and it, it's retired, but um, just think about it. For every 50 you spend, you're going to get one of these um, six by six packs in the mail and it's just kind of a, a fun little thing for March but please use uh, the host code right there so you can get your gift uh, I also will have a new March tutorial I haven't done it yet but I'll just show you this is my um, free with purchase tutorial um, gift and you qualify that for that just as long as your order is over $15 you can get um, uh, a tutorial of your choice I have over 80 tutorials to choose from my uh, little honeybee it's a Hershey's honeybee um, was my February tutorial and um, so that's still available um, and if you spend $50 you get the tutorial and you get the paper so take advantage of that if you would like. All right, um, I am going to talk to you guys and say hello. Good morning, Karen is watching from work. Hello, hello, Amy from Washington State. Good morning, Dee from Missouri. Um, Janine says it's St. Patrick's Day month. Yeah, that's right. That's why I have green. My March 2022 is, is in green for, for March. <laughs> I tried to use a darker green, but it didn't show up very well. So it's kind of like a really bright green. Hope that doesn't hurt your eyes. Hello, Mary. Um, Dee says regular long envelopes are nine and a half by um, four and a quarter and are called business A10 envelopes. Thank you, Dee. Um, I, there are, all of these different um, a whatever I, I don't know them very well because we kind of just use a standard size envelope uh, with Stampin' Up and you can buy those envelopes from Stampin' Up so I just never really think about what their um, name is out there outside the Stampin' Up world world um, Mary said she enjoyed me uh, die cutting and uh, um, you know, I am happy that I die cut all those pieces on there because I wanted to show you that I love that sandwich um, with this new, if you use the sandwich with the lighter gray, we actually have two, um, two gray pads. One, this one you use with thick embossing folders and this one you use um, with the light gray, use that with your dyes instead of the white. And last night I wanted to also test out our embossing folders. Now, not all of our embossing folders will fit through the machine, but we have narrower ones and they will fit through. And this one, this one's the Dottie Hearts. You get two different embossing folders and this is just one of them. And last night I ran through um, this with the embossing machine. Um, I didn't use embossing today or this dry embossing on my card today, um, but it went through really nicely. And for that, you use the number one plate and the number three plate. My number one plate is over here. So 
for that you use the correct sandwich for for the embossing folders and that worked just fine it's just for the die cutting that it works so much better if you use the number three plate and the two clear plates rather than the number one plate and i i don't know why i think it's a little little thinner and it cuts absolutely fine and i i was just having so much trouble with that and um, I'm not having trouble now. I don't have to stagger anything. So we'll see as the month goes on, as I keep using the mini machine, um, if I still like it by the end of the month, but so far so good. I'm so happy that someone told me that last night because I was like, I can't promote this machine if I can't use it. And um, today it just worked really, really well. I really liked how it ran through actually, this was easier to crank through than my regular machine because it's just a little tiny die. I don't need this big machine for it. So it actually worked really, really well. So I'm glad I found that out. Okay, I'm just blabbing, aren't I? Um, okay. I'm just reading your um, things. Um, All right, I'm just reading. Um, there's some more comments about the die cutting. Um, Dee said, very pretty card. I forgot about making some line cards, but when I do remember, they always turn out nicely. It's just a different card to try. Get yourself out of the regular size rut. Uh, give it a whirl. Today's a great time to give it a whirl because you've got a, a blueprint. Um, and um, use my measurements if you want because the other measurements for the sketch, they are actually for a shorter card. So you can make your card the regular way or the longer way. All right. Well, I'm so glad you love the card today. Um, I hope you join us over on our Casing Tuesday Facebook group. You'll find the link down below in the description of the video. So make sure you pop over there and um, give someone a comment or post your own card. We'd love to um, see you over there. Um, wishing you all a great day and you can catch me live uh, Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube channel. And that's the day where I usually do a 3D project or I'm going to do a fancy fold. I haven't decided yet, but you'll catch me over there on Friday. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.